Uh, this is a talk that uh, I felt finally, after 23 years of speaking and writing in this space, I felt I needed to give, uh, in part for my own health and sanity, uh, because this is a long distance run. It's not a sprint. And yet so often what we discover is that uh, it's managed as if it were a sprint. And the cost and the consequences to the men and women who practice this craft and dark art uh, are not always apparent until it's too late to do anything about it. So having listened to people in a confessional mode or a pastoral mode, whatever you like to say, over the last 20 years, uh, has given me a, a significant number of uh, experiences based on what other people are telling me, not only what has happened to me over that time. Uh, you just heard a talk that talked about the, uh, mentioned how fast things are moving. Uh, the delta, the change rate is changing itself exponentially. And therefore, the platform on which all other domains of knowledge are based are also, like bio or nano, uh, or space technologies or material science, also accelerating at the same pace. And no one can keep up with the amount of information in the domain, even if they are an expert in that domain. And according to the people I have talked to in, in bioscience at CIA, uh, their concerns are that nobody in the world can know what anybody else in the world is doing because of the fractal-like coastline of exploration that has been enabled by uh, this Pandora's box we have opened. So I want to talk about some of the consequences to us as human beings, not just as security practitioners or professional intelligence people, <coughs> and they often overlap. And I want to be clear at the start that I'm, this is not one of those talks where I'm bashing the intelligence community, because I'm not. When I did my first talk at DEF CON uh, 21 years ago, I've spoken there for 21 years now, and the first one, uh, looking out at the few hundred people in the audience compared to the 25,000 that, that were there last August, uh, I could see the, what I called the kids then. Uh, the kids, I told, would be thought leaders in the 21st century, and indeed many of them are, having moved on to CIA and NSA and DARPA and corporate and military and so on. Uh, but they were too young to know that an older person could see their future, their trajectory more clearly based on their brilliance, their passion, their obsession, and their daring uh, than they themselves could since they were inside it. And I invited them. I said, if you want to hack, you want to hack, you want the best tools and the best techniques, and you are going to turn 21, which in those days meant you are going to be subject to felonious uh, prosecution instead of just your dad coming down to the police station to take you home. Uh, it's necessary uh, for you to go somewhere else uh, where you can come in under the umbrella of the intelligence community, uh, where you have the best tools, the best techniques, and the best mentoring from some of the brightest people in the world, uh, and you get a get-out-of-jail-free card because you get to break the laws of every country in the world in your work except that of those of the United States. Now, of course, you know that's changed. Now it's plus one. Uh, but it gave you cover. And it sounds sexy. If you've read the books and seen the movie, uh, who, who would not want to be part of that exciting, glamorous, daring, risky, edgy life where the adrenaline rush is, is uh, infrequent but powerful when it comes? So I didn't know then what I was inviting people to join or participate in the way I know it now in a more granular uh, fashion. 